Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make any website you need to create using WordPress for any business or really for any other purpose with absolutely no coding needed. So we're gonna cover every single step in the process from start to finish. So by the end of this video, you're gonna have a really beautifully designed WordPress site like any of these, or honestly any combination of any of these, that you're gonna create simply by choosing a base layout customizing it with your own elements, images, text, colors, content, all that good stuff. And then you can make it even more custom if you want by just dragging and dropping any element you want to include or by adding in any whole section that you need for your content, choosing from hundreds of these pro-designed, fully customizable layout blocks. And with just a few extra clicks, we're gonna make sure each page looks perfect on all of your mobile devices too. So I've personally created hundreds of websites like these using this exact method. It could not be any easier and the possibilities are truly limitless. So I think you're honestly gonna forget you ever needed a web designer or a developer to do any of this for you. And in case you ever wanna to skip to a specific step in the process, I have included chapter markers below this video down in the description for easy reference. So if you're ready, we're gonna start from the very beginning by getting you set up with a free domain name like yourbusiness.com for instance, as well as a huge discount on the easiest, most reliable, and cheapest WordPress hosting plan that I personally always use. Um, and in case you don't really know what exactly web hosting is, it's just the digital storage for all your website files, like you know your web pages, your images, all that stuff needs to be stored on a really reliable computer somewhere. So that's hosting. And to get that, you just wanna to go to westmcdowell.com slash hosting, and that's gonna give you my affiliate discount pricing on web hosting, along with that free domain name. So just go to westmcdowell.com slash hosting, and we can get started right now. Okay, so when you follow that link, westmcdowell.com slash hosting, you're gonna end up right here. So as you can see, you've got quite a discount, $2.95 as opposed to $8.99 a month. And you've got all kinds of great stuff with Bluehost. You've got uh, expert 24 seven support. I hardly need them, but when I do, they're right there. And it's just a really easy way to get your WordPress set up. And you do get that free domain name if you need it. So I'm just gonna click on get started. We're gonna get through this pretty quickly. Okay, so now it's time to choose your plan. Basic is just fine as long as you're just creating one website. If you're a, a web designer creating multiple sites for clients and you want staging servers, then go with one of these. But if you're just a business, all you need is this $2.95 a month plan. So I'm gonna click on select. Now here's where you can either use a domain you own. So if you already have a .com you wanna use, you would just type that in here and it'll walk you through the steps of transferring it. Or if you want a brand new domain, all you need to do is see if the one you want is available. So I would just type in yourmostprofitablewebsite.com and we'll see if that's available. Click on next. All right, we are in business, it's available. So all you need to do from here is input all of your billing information, choose your account uh, plan. So basically it is cheaper the longer out you go with 36 months, but you can go down to 12 months, that's fine too. Then we have all these extras. So I like to just uncheck all of them. I don't think any of them are that necessary and I'll click on turn it off. This one, Domain Privacy and Protection, is the only one you might consider um, that's gonna keep your name off potentially being on any spam lists, but I've actually not really encountered that, so it's up to you if you wanna keep that checked or not. And then enter in your payment information and check right here, and then click on Submit. Okay, so when everything goes through, all you have to do is click on Create Your Account. You've already got your domain name here. Now you're just gonna create your password, and I'm just gonna use the the one that they got for me. I'm just gonna take note of it. I'm just gonna do a copy. Then click right here to show that you've read and agreed and then create account. Now go to login and then type in your password and then log in. I'm just gonna save it. Okay, now create your website. I'm gonna choose skip this step and I'm gonna keep choosing <laughs> saying skip this. And then I'm finally gonna choose limitless customization and they're gonna ask you a few things. What type is it? Let's just say, you know, just choose the type of your business. 
Or, you know, we can actually just click on skip this step. I'm gonna do that. Now here's where you wanna put in the name of your business or the name of your website. Tagline's not that important, I'm gonna skip that and click continue. We actually do not need to pick our theme here because the next step we do is gonna take care of that for us. So I'm gonna click on skip this step for now. They're installing WordPress. And now we're ready to actually log into WordPress where the fun can begin. So just click right over here. Okay, so we're now inside of our WordPress dashboard. Actually, if we click right here, we're actually in the dashboard uh, where you would be when you log in to WordPress each time. So a few things I wanna show you real quick before we get started. So within WordPress, the side panels where you're gonna go, this is where most of your options are. So whenever you write a blog post, for instance, you can click on posts, add new, same with pages. But the main thing I actually wanna talk about right now is users because you didn't actually choose a password for WordPress yet. So we're gonna go ahead and click on users, all users. Now, when you signed up, it did create a user account for you. So I'm just gonna click on edit and I'm gonna go down to the bottom and it allows you to put in your first name, your last name, all that stuff. The really important thing though is that it has your email correct and that it has your password. So change it to something you'll remember and then click on update profile. Then whenever you need to log back into your account, you just go to yourwebsitename.com slash wp-admin. You're gonna put in your username and your password. So the only thing left before we can start building is we need to add the right plugin. So let's go over to plugins on the left side. And I just wanna do a little cleanup here. So I'm gonna click on dismiss. I'm gonna get rid of all of these annoying pop-ups. This is up to you if you wanna do it or not. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to choose all of these plugins and I'm gonna deactivate all of them and I'm gonna choose them again. And then I'm going to delete them and then click on apply. Now we're gonna add in the only plugin we actually need and that is called starter templates. So just type that in the search bar. And this is the one right here. It's got a, over a million installs. It's a great plugin. So I'm gonna click on install and activate. So what this is doing is it's getting us set up with the page builder we need as well as the theme we need, which is Astra. Now just click on see library. And here it's gonna ask you which page builder you want. We want Elementor, it's definitely the best one. It's all I recommend. Okay, so now you can see how many options we have for website layouts. There are, I haven't counted them, but there's gotta be like hundreds of them. And they're organized in a few ways. So first of all, you'll notice that some of them have this little premium marker on them. That means you have to have the, the, the pro version, I believe of starter templates. So. Let's go ahead and get rid of those so we're only left with the free ones, all right? So we're just gonna go up to all, and then we're gonna choose free, and then that's gonna give us, that's gonna leave us only with the free option. So from there, you'll notice how a lot of these are named for the kind of business uh, that, that they're marking this out for. So online health coach, uh, looks like a plant store, uh, learn baking, but I wanna tell you, there's nothing inherent about this website that makes it only for online health coaches, right? If you change that image, if you change the text to say something else, suddenly it could be for a lawyer or a doctor's office. It could be for anything, really. So I don't want you to get too bogged down in the, the categories that they kind of come up with for you because you're meant to change all the images, change all the text, change the colors to fit your brand. So all we're really looking for here is the right layout to fit your content the best. And you can go ahead and preview any of these just by clicking on it. And then you'll see all the pages it comes with. This one comes with three different pages and you'll just scroll down to see the basic layout of it. And if it fits your content really well and you can kind of start to see it coming together, then it might be a good one for you. And then you can just click through to all these and see what the different layouts are there. But again, don't be too, uh, don't look at the, the images they're using or the colors they're using because that really doesn't play into it whatsoever. All right, so we're gonna get started though. In nine times out of 10, I like to start with this first one, Outdoor Adventure. I think it's just a nice base layout for just about any business. Um, it's got some sections that I don't always use, but I'm gonna show you in this video how easy it is to delete a section that you don't like, 
add in a new section that fits your content better, and then you know swap section for section. We can rearrange them to really fit exactly what your content needs the most. So this particular template comes with one, two, three, it comes with five pages, and they're named, obviously about services, projects, contact, but there's nothing, like I said, how you don't need to follow the category of the business when you're choosing your template, you don't need to follow these page names either. There's nothing that says we can't change the projects page to a testimonials page or a case studies page, or we could change services to a galleries page. It really is super customizable, and you're gonna see what I mean as we go. So we're gonna start with this one, but you feel free to start with whichever template you think serves your content the best, and this all goes pretty much the same way no matter which template you choose. So I'm gonna click on Import Complete Site, and then they just ask you a few questions here. And then next, and I'm just gonna click on Skip. So now it's just importing all the pages, all the images, all the content, and that generally takes just a couple minutes. All right, so this message tells us that was a success. So now all we have to do is click on View Site to see what we are working with. Okay, so here is our homepage with all these different sections on it, and we're just gonna to get to work now, kind of customizing section by section, changing the text, the image, the styles, the colors, all that good stuff, so it's gonna look very unique for your business in the end. So the way we can actually start editing this, because this is just basically showing us uh, the page as your customers would see it. Oh, and I do wanna point out too, we have a nice navigation menu up here that's all been imported in, and all of these links actually link to the respective pages. So there's not a whole lot to do there. At the end of this video, we're gonna to get to uh, customizing this to make sure it looks the way we want, has all the pages we need, but we'll get to that later on. So let's just start editing this. So we wanna go up to Edit with Elementor, and here we are inside of Elementor, which is basically just our page building plugin that Starter Templates installed for us when we installed that. So it's a really easy way of dragging and dropping any little content blocks you need and then customizing them. So just a little crash course here, we have two sides to the screen. We've got the stage over here, which is the preview of what your website's gonna look like. And then on the left, we have our side panel with all of the different widgets anything from headings, images, videos, buttons, text editors, dividers, Google Maps, all that icons, all that good stuff is located over here. Anything you want to put on your website, you would just simply take and click and drag into place. And then once something's over here, you can edit it over here. You can change the text over here, you can change the style, things like text color, things like uh, the font, all that good stuff you can change over here. So you drag things that you want over here and then you edit them by clicking on them and then over here. It's pretty easy and you're gonna get the hang of this really quick, I promise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click, delete that, we don't need it. Now let's talk about fonts for a second. So there's a couple ways we can change our text uh, as we go on the page. The first way is a little annoying and time consuming and that involves clicking on each instance of some text, like we click this, we go up to style, under typography, family, we would change it there. We can change things like the size, the, the weight, meaning how bold or how thin it is. We can tr change things like if it's all uppercase or just however you type it. So there's a lot of things we can change one by one. However, there's a much better way, a much easier way, and that's basically taking care of all of it at once. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's say you've got a few fonts picked out. You do have access to thousands of Google fonts, by the way. So if you wanna to go to that website, just search for Google fonts, and you can see all of your options. There's a ton. Or maybe you like this font, which I think is perfectly fine. It's a nice clean font to get started with. You don't have to change it if you don't want to, but if you wanted to, this is how we do it. So we're gonna go up to this little hamburger menu, these three dot, three lines rather, and then we're gonna go into site settings. And now we're gonna go down to typography. So here's where we're gonna change the default fonts for all the different types of text you'd have. So you can see we have body right here, which basically is any of this, you know, any paragraph text. This would be body copy, this would be. So we can change that if you want to. The way we would do that is we'd go to typography, and then under family, I'm going to pick one that I happen to like a lot called Montserrat. It's just a nice clean font. I think it's perfect for a paragraph font. I actually like it for a headline as well. 
And you could also change the, the sizing of it. Like if you knew you wanted it to be a larger body copy font, you could absolutely do that. I'm just gonna get rid of it and go make it go back to default for our purposes. So now we need to talk about our headings, okay? These are generally known as H1s, H2, H3, H4, H5. Basically, H1 is the most important headline on the page. It's always the one on top. It's like the name of the page usually. Then H2 would be, you know, this kind of a, a heading. It's not quite the big heading on the page, but it's, it's still there. It's like that one would be H2, this one would be H2. Then H3 would probably be these guys. It's basically a ranking of importance. So what I like to do is I like to take care of H1 through about H4, and they can all be the same font. In this case, I'm gonna choose one for H1. So I'm gonna go in to typography. I'm gonna choose Bebus New, kind of like that one, and I'm gonna make the size a bit bigger as well. I think that looks good. And then I'm gonna under H2 through four, I'm just gonna choose Montserrat, make it nice and easy. Okay, so I've done that for H1 through H4. You could continue with H5 and H6 if you want, but those are hardly ever used and they're easy just to kind of change on the fly as we go. So um, I'm gonna click down at update. That's gonna save our changes. If you don't do that, everything we just did kind of goes away. And then I'm gonna click on the X to get back to where we can actually edit this particular page. All right, so here we are on the home page. Let's just start editing this. So the first thing I might change would be the headline. So I'm gonna click on it, and then right over here is where I can change the actual text. And then if I wanted to override any of the settings that I created uh, in the last step, all we need to do is go to style. I could change the color of it if I wanted to. I can just kind of drag this around. I can drag this color bar around. So you can find any color you need. Or if you have a color code, you may have some of those. You would just paste that in right here. But I'm just gonna go back to white. And now what about all this other content? So I don't really like this text being above the main headline. I'd, I'd rather have this be a subheadline underneath it. So if we wanted to move something around really easy, we just click the pencil and we drag it right underneath, drag it right into place where we want it. And then we're left with this little divider line. Um, they love these divider lines and these themes. I don't see much use for them, but that's up to you. If you wanted to keep it, you can change the width of it up here. If you went to style, you could change the color and the weight, meaning how thick it is. All kinds of things you can do, but I'm just gonna right click, delete. All right, so now already it looks like there's a lot of space between this headline and this text, right? So, so the way we fix that is we just click on that headline and then we go up to advanced and here, we have padding, right? So this is basically giving, this is padding out the bottom and the top. So we have 13 on top, 20 on bottom. Let's see what this looks like if I just delete that. And I still feel like there's too much. So I'm actually gonna go up to margin and I'm going to, on bottom, I'm gonna go down into the negative range here. And you'll notice the same value is reflected on all of them on all sides. So I'm actually going to delete this and I'm going to unlink the values so we can just deal with the bottom. So I'm going to drag this up so it's a little closer. And I think that looks good just like that. All right, so now what about this background image? How do we deal with that? So the way we do it is we have to select the entire section. So we can either click right up here or we can right click edit section. And then we would go over to style. Now style is where we get to choose um, the background, basically. There's a lot of different options. You could have just a solid color. You could have a gradient in the background. You could have a video. We'll get to that later, that's kind of a cool one. Or you could choose a few images to have a slideshow. Uh, but we're just gonna go simple. We're just gonna change out this image for another one. So I'm just gonna click on choose image. And then if you had an image all ready to go, you would just take that file and you would drag it right into the window here and then click on insert media. The other option you have is you have access to, I mean, I would guess hundreds of thousands of free images. These are stock images from Pixabay. It's a website. Now, this, these all look stretched out in the preview. I don't know why it always does that to me, uh, but, they, but they're actually not stretched out when you use them on your site. So you would just do some kind of a, a search for what you're looking for. You could choose by orientation, like if you wanted something, in our case, we'd probably want it to be horizontal. You would just find the one you like, 
and then you would click on insert media and it would import it in for you. Totally free to use, totally legal to use. So, um, but I've already got a few images picked out. So I'm just gonna go to my media library and click the one I like and insert. Super easy. So now you will notice that this image looks quite a bit darker than the image over here does. Um, the reason is there's a background overlay added to this background image by default. The reason they do that is because a lot of times you need that overlay, you need like kind of a color on it or black on it to make the text really stand out. Um, that was totally not intentional by the way, but <laughs> um, in this case, I actually wanna see what it would look like to knock that back a bit because I don't think it needs it in this case. So we would just go to background overlay. This is how you change it. So you can do classic, solid, you could do gradient as well. Now, be careful with gradient. I've seen this go really sideways for a lot of people, and it really makes a site look kind of amateurish if you don't choose the right kind of gradient. So in most cases, especially if you're not a designer, I highly recommend just sticking with a black overlay. You really can't go wrong there. And we've already got that. We've already got a black overlay. So I'm just gonna go down to opacity, and I'm gonna just bring this down. I'm gonna bring it all the way down first to see what, what that looks like. Now that text is a little hard to read that way. So I'm just gonna start sliding it to the point where now we can, we can actually read the text, but it's not darkening the image too much. So I think this looks pretty good. All right, so now moving on to the button. So let's go ahead and click on that. And there's a few things we can change. We can obviously change the text that's on the button. We can change things like the background color, you know, how rounded these edges are, and of course where it links to. So the first thing we'll do is we'll change the text um, we do that under content. We could type in, you know, let's get started, anything like that. We could change the alignment of the button to the left or the right, but in this case, center is right on the money. So uh, let's go, or, oh, and link, this is important. So I generally recommend at the end of this, once you have all your pages, that's when you would uh, link all your buttons together. So you would just basically type in, you know, HTTPS, colon backslash backslash and then you know your website.com slash contact for instance you know whatever that page's address is that's what you'd put in here um, so now let's go over to style and this is where we can change the color so what if we wanted the button to kind of match this inner tube right here we could go to under background type first of all we have classic or we have gradient so you could choose you know a couple colors and it would be a gradient on it but let's just be simple for now. We'll go, go to classic, and I'm just gonna type in a color code that'll get us close to that, but eh, I don't know if I'm feeling that. Let's take a look, preview that. Eh, I think we can do better. Let's just keep playing around. So let's just click right in here, and then we can move the slider all around. We can try to find the right color, maybe something in the green family. Or again, if you have a code that you wanna use, you would just type that right here. And here's a tip that'll save you a ton of time. So whenever you have a color that, you're, that you've used and you know you are gonna wanna use it again on the site somewhere else, you can save it so that you don't have to fumble for it each time. So once you've got it loaded here, you would just click the plus sign and then you can give it a name or not, it doesn't really matter. I'll just call it button green and then create. All right, so let's take a little preview of this. So whenever you wanna get a true view of what it's gonna look like without these you know, boxes around it or the sidebar, we just have to collapse it. So we do that by clicking on this little arrow panel right here. Now, what if we wanted to actually kind of push this image up a little bit? Maybe we wanted the girl on the inner tube to be a little higher up and we would want less beach to show. This works really well, like especially if you have a picture of a person and their face might be in the wrong position. So all we need to do to, to kind of tweak the image positioning is click on the section and then under the image, let's go to position and you can choose any of these like center, center, which is gonna change it a bit, that didn't really do it. Um, but then let's, let's try custom. And here's where we can really have granular control over that. We can change the up and down or the left and right. But in this case, that's, uh, that's not gonna work out. So let's just mess with the top and bottom part. Let's see what that looks like. And I do think I like this better. So we'll just keep going with that. And now it's time to move on to our next section. Now what they have here for us is a quote. 
I don't think it's necessary and I, for me, it's not gonna fit the content. So a good lesson to show you how to get rid of any section that they have. So all we need to do is click on the X and it's gone. Pretty easy, right? So what if we wanted to replace that with a different section or a different uh, layout that's gonna fit our content the best? So in order to get a new section, we're just gonna click on the plus sign and now we've got two basic ways of creating a section, okay? So the first one would involve just choosing how many columns you want and then dragging and dropping different elements into place where you want them and then customizing them. And we'll get to that later. I'll show you how to do that as well because it's good to know how to create basically anything you need. But you usually don't need to do that because they've come up with so many great uh, section blocks for you that are super easy to customize. So let's start with that. Let's just click on the starter templates icon right here. And then we're gonna move over to blocks. So check this out. Look at how many section blocks there are. All these different layouts to fit pretty much any type of content you need. And don't be worried, these look very boring, right? Because it's all black and white but that's not what it's gonna look like when we're done with it. So that's what you always need to keep in mind. Um, and these are arranged into categories. So if you knew you wanted an about us section or a gallery section, you would basically just come here and you would look for the closest thing that you're trying to find. You could also filter, you know, you could do a search, you could filter by color. Like if you knew you wanted a dark section right there, you could do dark or light or I'm just gonna leave it on all. And I'm just gonna take a minute to find the perfect section that I think would work best for our content. Um, and actually, I think I've already found it right here. I think this one will work great. So I'm gonna click on that and then import block. Okay, so here we are with our content blocks. We have room for a nice image here. And then, you know, we could have our three benefits or three services, whatever it is um, that would fit your content best. So the first thing we wanna do is we'd wanna change the text up here. Nice little subheadline, so you would change that over here, and then you would change the description over here. Or if you wanted to delete it, you could just right click delete if it doesn't fit, meaning if, if it's something you don't need. That's what I meant, not, not it doesn't fit physically. I do wanna make one change to this. I feel like there's too much space between these lines, which is a common thing I've found on a lot of these. So I'll show you how to fix that. You just click on the headline itself, then go up to style, typography, so again, we've talked about how we can change the size and the weight and the make it, you know, if we didn't want it to be all uppercase, we could change that. But line height is what I'm gonna look at. So I'm gonna make it a little less spacing between the lines. Something like that looks good to me. So it's 1.1, I'm gonna remember that so we can uh, make that change each time. All right, so let's change out this image just by clicking on it. And then we'll go over to choose image. And again, you would drag whatever image you want over, or you could use a free one from Pixabay. But I've already got one picked out, so I'm gonna click right there and then insert media. All right, that's looking good. So then we just wanted to tackle each one of these. So let's say these were gonna be the benefits of working with you, you know, fast service, all the extras, start to finish, whatever that looks like for you. So these are what I call compound widgets. So this is a an image box, which controls everything in one place. You can change the image, the title and the description right here. And we already know how to change an image, that's easy. We know how to change the title and all that stuff. So what I think I wanna do though, I wanna show you how to actually use one of the widgets that it comes with, just to show you that you're never locked in to what they're giving you. So I'm actually going to right click delete. And again, I'm gonna get rid of this one and I'm gonna get rid of this one. And I'm gonna replace these with icon boxes just to change it up. So let's go up to our widgets, this six, or these nine dots in the grid. I'm just gonna type in icon, and I'm look, yeah, icon box is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna drag that on over into our first column. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna get this looking just right, and then we'll just copy and paste it into the other ones. Um, so what if I wanted it to be more like the layout we had before, where the icon or the image was over here, and then the text was over here? You've got the choice here. Of, well, first of all, there's a few things. View default for the icon, or it could be stacked meaning it could be on a circle or a square, or it could be framed by a circle or a square. But I think I'm just gonna put it back to default. And then icon position, it can either be on the right or the left or how it was on top. But I'm gonna put it back over to the left. And then I might change the title to fast service. 
And then I might kind of edit the text over here. I'll just make it a little shorter. And then of course you're not locked into having a star as your icon. You can do whatever you want. Just click on icon library and there are a ton of these. So you do have to do a little bit of digging though. A lot of times it's, it's not super intuitive. There are a lot of them are named kind of strangely. So you, you will have to just look around, find something that fits. So if I'm looking for something that's like saying fast, I would maybe type in fast first. Um, now I'm, just gonna maybe make look for an airplane or something, or a plane. See, that's what I'm talking about. I would have thought it would be air, airplane, but it's just plain. So I'm gonna choose that and then insert. And then you can change the style by going up to style. And then under the icon, you can change the primary color to whatever you want. And I've got a color already picked out. I'm gonna type in there and then I'm gonna save it as well. Remember how we save it, we just click on the plus icon. Let's name it magenta accent. And then if it looks like how you want it to look and you're happy with it, you just do a right click copy, right click paste, and one more time. And then we just go through each of these changing the titles, descriptions, and the icons. Okay, so let's check out what we've got so far. I think it looks pretty good. And now we're ready to move on to our next section. Okay, so let's say we wanted to make this next section our services section. So I think we can actually work with this content. Let's say we have two different services. If you had three, all you need to do is take the column, right click, and then duplicate. And now you've got three. And if you wanted to have six, you would just take this whole section, right click, duplicate, and now you've got another row there. So it's super easy. I hope you're kind of getting how easy it is to customize all this stuff. But I'm, anyway, I'm gonna X this out. I'm gonna go back to how we had it and I'm gonna delete this column as well. All right, so first things first, I do wanna kind of see, get a sense of the space of this section. So I'm gonna right away change the background color. So we just click on the section, then go up to style. Now remember again, we have different background choices. We can do a, a solid color, they call that classic. We could do a gradient, video, image, or slideshow. But I'm just gonna choose a nice neutral uh, background color, something like that. And then I'll just change our title here by clicking on it to our services. And then we probably don't need this divider line, so I'm just gonna right click that and then delete it. Now we'll customize each of these columns right here. So we'd obviously want to add our own images and change the text too. So let's just start with the images by clicking each one, then go to choose image. We already know how to do this. You would drag it over or you would just choose something uh, from stock. So I'm gonna click on insert media. Now this is something I do wanna direct your attention to. I don't know if you can see on this video, but the coloring is pretty different from here to here. This is what the image should look like but it's like kind of red. The reason is they've added these like styles to the images for this theme. And I don't know why they did that. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, but I'll show you how to fix it and get it back to exactly how you want it to be. So you'll just go up to style and then they've added these, what they call CSS filters. So if you take a look at that, you can change things like, you know, the brightness, the contrast, the saturation and the hue. Now we don't recommend necessarily doing these things if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm just gonna put it back to default and get rid of all of them. So we just click this little icon right here. And now it looks like how it should. And then we will change the, the title and description and the learn more button. So we'd click either, if, if you don't need that, you would just right click delete because this should go to a page dedicated to that particular service. But let's just say you have that page and you want to just customize the button. You can change the text of it here. You can change the link where it links to right here. You just type in the entire web address and then go up to style and background type color. Let's go ahead and choose our same green color that we already chose. And going back up to the image for a second, I do see there is this very slight kind of uh, shadow behind it. They've kind of added this in as a design element. But what if you don't like that? So all you need to do is choose the image under style, box shadow is where that's controlled. So I'm gonna click on this. Um, you can change the settings of it. You can make it blurrier. You can change how far it goes to the, to the side or to the bottom. You can change, if you click on the color, you can make this much darker if you wanted to. I mean, I don't recommend these things necessarily. And I just got rid of it by clicking on clear. 
And I do want to show you one cool thing, actually, that Elementor finally added that I've been wanting them to add for a while, um, and that is a, a mask. We can make this image into a shape if we want to. So let's just click on the image. We go up to Advanced, and then under Mask, we can turn it on. And then we've got choices of Circle, Flower, Sketch, Triangle, we've got all these different things. Blob, that's kind of a, a trendy one right now. So depending on your needs, these may be kind of a cool design element for you, but I'm actually just gonna turn that off for now and just go super simple with it. So now let's just go to column two and we'll start customizing that with our own content as well. All right, so now we just wanna copy and paste our styles. Remember we changed the style of this between those CSS filters and the drop shadow behind it. So I'm gonna right click, copy, then right click, paste style. And I'm gonna do the same thing with our button. Right click, copy, right click, paste style. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got so far. From top to bottom, I think it's coming together pretty nicely. So let's go on to our next section now. All right, so We've got this section, they've got this for us, they've got this for us. I don't know that we need either of these particular sections. If you wanted to work with whatever they have, we already know how to edit a section uh, that we like. So I'm just gonna delete these and we're gonna add some new sections. So I'm gonna click on the X and then one more time. So let's just add in a nice little testimonial section here. So again, we're gonna click on the starter templates icon and then blocks. And I'm going to search for testimonials, let's see what they have that kind of looks good. All right, so I think this one looks nice. We've, we've had a few light sections, so I think a dark one would actually look kind of cool now. And then I'm gonna click on import block. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and give this a really nice dark background image. I think that would be cool. So let's, uh, let's click on the section itself, go up to style, and then under image, we'll just choose one. And I think this might be a good case for choosing one of those stock photos. So let's see what they've got for us. I'm just gonna type in tropical and see what comes up. And again, these will not be stretched out like this when we actually put them in, okay? Oh, and I'm gonna do uh, orientation, horizontal. All right, so let's find the perfect photo now. All right, I think I like, I think I like this one and this one, but let's just go with this one, Beach Sand Island. We'll click that and then save and insert. Okay, so you'll notice a few things right away. This text is hard to read. We're gonna to need to put a dark overlay on it. And it seems to be repeating over here, which is what we don't want. So what we need to do to, co to combat that, oh, and let me show you this. So let's go back up to the top. See how the image stays in place and everything else scrolls on top of it? I want that same effect here as well. All we need to do to get that is under attachment, we choose fixed. Then so that we don't have this repeating pattern, we need to go under size and choose cover. So that means the image is going to be big enough to cover the entire window. All right, so now let's go to background overlay and classic, and I'm just gonna choose black. And then we can make this as dark or transparent as we want. I think that's going to look pretty nice. Now we just need to customize, we would obviously change the headline text if we wanted to do that. But I think I definitely wanna change the styling of these testimonial boxes. I want the boxes to be white, the text to be black. So let's choose each one of these. We'll go up to style, text color, I'll choose black. And now to change the background color, this one's a little tricky, it's a little hidden. I don't know why they did it this way, but we have to go up to advanced and then under background, that's where that's hidden. So let's just choose white. Looks pretty good, and then we'll change the image by clicking on it and then choose image. And then obviously you would wanna pick the real image of the person leaving the testimonial, if you have that. I always love including an image of the person leaving the testimonial. I think it works best that way. And now with the star rating, let's go ahead and make those yellow because I like them always to match what people are used to seeing on actual review sites. It makes it a little more trustworthy. So I'm gonna go under style to color, and we're just gonna kind of play around and find the right shade that looks good. And I think that looks nice. And I'm not sure why they default to less than five stars here. Like that's kind of, <laughs> we definitely wanna have actually five stars showing up here. And then you know how to change the name and the title. You just click on each and change it on over here. All right, so now I'm gonna apply these changes across the board. So I'm gonna right click copy, 
right click paste style and one more time and the same thing with the stars edit copy paste style paste style now we just need to go in each of these columns and change the content out you know meaning the text for the testimonial the image the star rating and the name and all that good stuff so i'm just going to do that really quick And let's say we wanted to change the font here for the name. We would just click on it, go up to style, typography. I'm gonna choose our Bebus new to see what that looks like. And then bump up the size a bit. And wait, let's make it normal, not bold. All right, I like that. So now we'll just right click copy, right click paste style, and one more time. All right, so moving right along, let's put a little about us section on the page. So there are definitely good blocks that'll get you there by clicking on the starter templates icon. But I do want to show you the other way of creating a section just to show you how easy it is and how truly anything's possible uh, when you do it yourself. So I'm going to click on the plus icon this time. And from here, all we need to do is choose how many columns we want. So in this case, we're going to pick two. So I'm going to click on two. And so now we've created this little section and it's tiny and it has no form to it yet. So what we need to do is start adding our own content to it. Uh, so we're gonna go up to the widgets icon up here and we'll start with a heading. Let's drag that over into column one. Then we'll get a text editor and we'll drag that right on underneath the headline. And finally, let's have a little fun here. Let's get a video. So we just drag that widget on over into column two. Now, the first thing I wanna address here, the first thing I wanna fix is the spacing issue. So notice how tight everything is, I'm just gonna kind of expand this out. Notice how tight everything is here. Now this is a very common mistake I see when people are DIYing their own websites. I'll see a lot of issues like this. And that can really make people abandon your site quickly because it feels chaotic, right? You wanna give everything a lot of breathing room, places for their eyes to rest. That's all gonna make it feel much nicer. So uh, to give this more padding on the top and bottom, we're gonna choose the whole section. And we've already done this a little bit before. We're gonna go up to advanced and we're gonna do go to padding. So we're gonna unlink the values. So we're only dealing with padding on the top and bottom, not on the sides. So let's see what 50 would look like on top and bottom. I think that's fine, but let's actually give it more. Let's give it 80 on each. And that feels about right to me. So now obviously we just change the text by clicking on it. And then we might give this a little bit more text here. I'm just gonna do a a paste and then it helps to break it into paragraphs that helps people read it a lot better and now what about the video how do we change that out so first of all I do highly recommend you hosting your videos on you know upload them to either YouTube or Vimeo I do not recommend just uploading your video to your website and have it play from there it's just a huge drain on your hosting and your site's gonna load really slowly as well so totally free always free to upload to YouTube and it's good for SEO value too. So make sure it's uploaded first, then you're just gonna click on the video player and under content, you'll choose it's on YouTube by default. If it's on Vimeo or Daily Motion, which I've never used before, then you would choose that. And then you're just gonna pop in the link to that video. And it never hurts to have a nicely designed thumbnail on it. And then to get rid of this little thing, the watch on YouTube banner, we're just gonna go under player controls and click that off. And then what if we wanted to have a little, another call to action button under here? Well, we could drag a button over and then customize it, or we can just take one we already have. I'm gonna right click copy, then right click paste. And then I might left justify it to be in line with everything else or right over here. And I think we're looking pretty good at this point. So I'm gonna do one more section on this page and then we can move on to the rest of the site. So. I did promise you I'd show you how to do a video background. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna do a little uh, final call to action section. So let's click on starter templates, blocks, and then I'm gonna see, I think they've got call to, act, yeah, call to action right here. I'm just gonna choose something nice and simple like this one right here and then import block. Now we just wanna edit the content. I'll do a copy on the button and a paste style. Then I need to recenter it because it was taking those styles over there. 
And then we've got our social icons. Um, I think these are misplaced here. I wouldn't actually include them, but you can always uh, edit them if you want. So you would just click on, you would click on the pencil and then each one of them is here. You can go to icon library to find a different social network. Then you link to your profile here. You can change the colors and everything under style, but we're just gonna delete it. I'm gonna right click delete. All right, so now we get to have some fun and put in the perfect video background. So the first thing you need to do is find, or you, either you have a video you wanna use, or you need to find one. So here we are on YouTube, and you are technically legally allowed to embed a YouTube video on your own website, even if you didn't upload the video yourself. You know, people who, up, once you upload a video to YouTube, it basically becomes the property of YouTube, and they can, and you are allowed to embed it. So what I like to do though, when I'm gonna find a background video, I generally like to stick with stock video that's made for that purpose, just so I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. So in this case, I might search something like beach stock video free. Then you would just go through and you would find something that works either as an entire video or all you really need is a good 15 second chunk from the video and I'll show you how to loop that in a second. So I've already found one that I like and all you really have to do is you just have to go to the video itself and then you would just grab the, uh, the URL up here. You just highlight that and copy it. And then once you've got that copied to your clipboard, you would just choose the entire section, go up to style. And then now we get to choose the video player background. And then I'm gonna type in the, the URL that I just copied. All right, so here we go. And remember how I said you can just isolate a chunk that you wanna use. So I found a little, bit of the video that I like from the 76 second mark. So I'm gonna type that in all the way up to 100 seconds. So there we go. I think that looks pretty cool. And I just, I do just want to add that uh, color overlay on top of it to knock it back a bit so that the text really stands out more. So I'm gonna collapse background. I'm gonna go to background overlay. And again, I'm just gonna choose basic black. It works the best almost every time. And then let's play around and see how, how it looks with different opacities. So I think something like that actually looks pretty awesome. So I'm just gonna collapse this, and now we can take a look at our entire page from start to finish. I think it's coming together really well. Now it's time to do one last step before we can move on to the rest of the site, and that's just to make sure it looks as good on mobile as it does on desktop. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna click on update to save our changes. If you don't do that, all our hard work is pretty much gonna go out the window. So you always wanna make sure you update uh, before you close out. And the way we're gonna check this on mobile is just go right down here. They've made it really easy on us. Uh, just click on responsive mode. And this is gonna open up the preview on, uh, on a mobile. And there's definitely some issues here, we'll get to it. But as we scroll down, we'll see that there's not a whole lot of formatting issues. It looks pretty good. And the reason is, all those starter template blocks we've been using, they've already been pre-programmed to look good on mobile. So our work is not gonna be very intensive here. We've probably got a few things to do and that's about it. So there are definitely changes we can make that will only apply on mobile. So basically what I mean is if we change this text to be smaller, that's not gonna affect what we've done on desktop. It's only gonna apply on mobile. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll just click on the text. We'll go to style, typography, and anything you see that has the little mobile icon next to it, that me, that tells you that whatever, you, whatever change you make is only gonna apply on mobile. So things like size we can play around with, but things like weight, meaning how bold it is, that would apply across the board. So if we changed it, it would also change on desktop. So you only wanna change stuff that has the little icon next to it, right? So let's just go ahead and play around with this and see what looks the best. I think that looks pretty good, just like that. And the other major thing I'm seeing is, see how the image isn't covering all the way down. The reason is, remember how we changed the positioning of that image. So we need to change it again for mobile. So we need to choose the entire section, so edit section style, and then under the image, under position, we're gonna choose, let's see what center center looks like, okay? The only problem is we're not getting that uh, girl on the inner tube, so maybe we need that to show. Let's just go over to custom, 
And now we can drag this around to show exactly what we want to see in the viewfinder. So maybe something like that. And let's see if we can actually, yeah, we can't really do too much of this because it's gonna give us the gray areas again. So let's just zero that out. But that looks pretty good to me. And if you wanna get, again, the true sense of what this is really gonna look like on your phone, we do need to collapse it. It's gonna give us a better sense of the space. So that looks pretty good now. I think this looks good. Get through everything. All right, I think most of this looks good. And we will notice anytime you do a video background, that's def by default gonna be set to not play on mobile, which is generally a good experience for people. People don't wanna use their data for it, but let's say you really wanted it to play on mobile, you can just click on the section and then under style. So we've got all the video stuff happening here. You would just click on play on mobile, yes. But generally I think the better thing to do is to give it a background fallback. So what that means is when they're on mobile, they're not getting the video, they're getting an image instead. So you just have to choose that here. Now let's go ahead and choose this, these plants here. And I think that looks pretty good. So I think we're good to go in terms of the home page. Now we can move on to our next page. So again, we're gonna click on update to save those changes. And we'll click on this little preview changes icon down here, it's a little eyeball. So now we're gonna click on the next page in our navigation, About, and then Edit with Elementor where the fun can start all over again. Okay, so this should all look very familiar to you. It's the same kind of layout, staging area on the right, sidebar on the left. So all we need to do is what we did on the homepage. We just need to go section by section, deciding if what they have for us fits our content. If it does, we customize it. If it doesn't, we delete it and we replace it with a more appropriate section. So let's just start off with our hero right up top. So we already know how to change the headline text. We just click it and we change it over here. We change the background image by clicking the entire section, edit section, style, and then choose image. And I'm gonna go with this one and click on insert. Now, one thing I don't like about this, I do feel like this is way too tall. People are gonna to need to scroll way too much to get to the, the real content. So to make it a little shorter, all we need to do is, again, we're, we have the section chosen. We just go up to advanced and see they've got a lot of padding here for us. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna see 150 and then 150. And that already looks way more reasonable to me. So, and if you didn't want a background image at all, you could just go to style and trash it and then put a color there instead. You could even make the color white and shorten the space up and then make the text black. Really, you can do anything you wanna do. Just whatever it, whatever you do, just kind of make note of it so you can do the same thing on the other pages so it's all consistent across the board. That's, that's pretty important. But I'm gonna do a Command Z to get our photo back. All right, so now let's just go down the page and start customizing it. So, and you know, you just start changing all the text, you know, something like that then we can right click delete the divider. And then you would change this text by clicking on it over here. And of course, changing the image by clicking on that and doing it over here. And they've got, they've got that same CSS filter in the drop shadow here. So let's get rid of that. We're gonna click here, then go to style. CSS filters, we'll just click to go back to default. And then under box shadow, we're gonna get rid of that too. Then let's say we don't really need this section at all. It doesn't fit what we have. We're just gonna click on the X. And what if we wanted to replace it with another section? Say a, a meet the team section where you get to show some of your, your employees or your founders. There's a lot of cool layouts for that. So just click on starter templates, blocks, and then under all, we're gonna look for team. Then of course we just find the layout that we like the best. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one, nice and simple, has all the, the content we need, and then import block. So then you would change the headline, something like meet the team. You could change this or just delete it if you don't need it. I think we don't need a lot of explanation here. And then you would just go block by block changing the image and the names. Obviously we just click it and then change it by choosing image. Easy as that. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. I think this is a pretty nice little simple about us page. Uh, but now, remember we do need to reality check this for mobile too. So 
We're gonna go down to responsive mode and just see what we got. All right, cool. So this text is way too big again, so we're just gonna click on that and then go to style, typography. And then remember, we're looking for this mobile icon to tell that tells us that this change we make is only gonna be applied on mobile, keeping it all intact on desktop. So I think something like that looks pretty good. I think this all looks nice. All right, cool, I think we're good to go. So just click on update, then on preview changes, and then we'll click on to services to get to our next page to work with, and then edit with Elementor. All right, so here we go again. We just wanna start with the headline. We'll just change that out, you know, whatever you wanna call that. And then in terms of the background, we know how to do that already. We just click on the whole section, style, choose image. I'll go with this one and then insert media. And then we want to shorten it up again. Remember how we do that? We go to advanced, padding. Uh, I think we just had it on 150 and 150. And then let's see what we have underneath here. So we just have a headline, a little bit of a description, and then space for, you know, four services. So I think we can definitely work with this. Let's just go ahead and change the headline here. And then I would probably get rid of the divider line. And then you would just change this text over here, of course, or delete it by right click delete. And then you just go one by one. It is adding your different services. So you would click here, you would change the name of it right here and the description here. And of course the image, just click on that, choose image, insert media. And then we have that weird CSS image issue again. So we're just gonna go to style, CSS filters back to default. And I'm gonna get rid of the drop shadow. I don't think we need it. So under box shadow, I will put that back to default as well. Now I'm just gonna change the rest of the images. Okay, so I've done that and you will notice how these are kind of different sizes. The only reason for that is because the ratios are not the same. So in, for instance, this photo just happens to be uh, longer and this one's a little stubbier <laughs> for lack of a better word. So. If you wanted them all to match exactly, you just have to make sure that your image, your images you're starting with have the same aspect ratio to them. But I actually think like it doesn't bother me that they're a little off. I think it actually looks kind of interesting that way. So for this purpose, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. But of course you wanna get rid of these drop shadows and the CSS filters on the other three images. So I'm gonna apply the style we have here with a right click copy, right click paste style and again, and again. All right, so that's pretty simple. And if you wanted to add a different section here, obviously you know what to do. Um, I think we can probably get rid of this section, so I'm gonna exit out. And if you wanted something else, you would just go down to starter templates and choose the most appropriate section and customize it in the same way. So now let's just do a quick responsive check. We'll click right down here, see what it looks like. Yeah, again, our this font is way too big, so we'll click that under style, typography, size, let's just make it as big as we can on one line and check it out. Yeah, it all looks pretty good, I think. So I think we're ready to move on. So all we need to do again is click on update to save our changes and then on the eyeball preview changes button. Okay, from there, we just go to our next page, which is labeled as projects, but we can actually change, let's say you don't have any projects uh, to, to show, that's not the kind of business you have. We can easily change it into something else, very doable, and I'll show you how. So let's say we wanted to change this into a page where we can show our you know, case studies and testimonials, basically clients that we've helped, that we've done a good job for, or whatever page you need. Maybe you need a gallery page. Maybe you need a pricing page, whatever it is, you can very easily change it. So let's just click up on edit with Elementor and get started. So I'll just call this client success and we'll deal with the background image. We'll choose that and then up to style, choose image. Let's choose that one. And then we'll make it smaller again. I should say make it shorter like we did for the rest of the pages under advanced. So we'll do 150 and 150 again for consistency. Then let's take a look at what we have here. So it's basically different galleries under different categories. So 
I don't think that's really gonna fit the content here. Maybe it fits for you and you wanna have different galleries under different uh, categories. But for us, I'm going to just go ahead and X all of these out and start fresh. One, two, three. All right, cool. So now we're basically left with an almost blank page. So let's say we wanted to have kind of a gallery of some of our work to show. So let's go down to starter templates and see if they have any good uh, section blocks for a gallery like that. So under all, let's see what we've got. Portfolio, I think is what they would call it. So let's see if they have anything that we like. So you've got a lot of different layouts. Like this one looks like it shows two at a time with arrows so we can kind of cycle through them. This looks like the same. Um, these I think are just kind of static, showing four photos, you know, and an interesting arrangement here. Keep in mind though with something like this, if your images aren't these orientations or these ratios, it's probably gonna look kind of funky when you're done with it. So let's just do something pretty simple that we can't go wrong with and just choose this one and then import block. So then I would just change the headline to something like, see our work. If you don't need the description here, I would just click on delete and then delete the little divider line as well. Now from here, what we're dealing with, it's a widget. It's a portfolio or ga image gallery widget. So you choose all of your photos in one place. So let's get rid of all of these dummy photos and just, so we'll click on the trash can and we'll click on delete. Now we get to choose all the images we want to include in that. So just click on the plus sign here and you would drag all your images over. I've already got some picked out, so let's just go ahead and choose some of these. All right, looks good. And then create a new gallery. And then it's up to you. You can put captions on all these if you want to. I'm gonna skip that step and then just click on insert gallery. All right, so here we go. And then if you click on each one, it opens up into a light box. And then this is where that caption if you wanted to put that in, that's where that would show up. And then people can scroll through just like that. Pretty nice feature to have. We'll just X out of there. And you can change you know, how many columns there are. So you could do two columns or four columns, but I think three actually looks the best. And if we go up to style, we can do other things too. We can give these kind of a, a rounded edge to them or rounded corners rather if we wanted to. So if we typed in 10, you can see it's rounded corners, and we can play with the spacing between all these if, if we thought it was too tight or too loose. So I think 10 probably looks, actually maybe 20. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. And let's just get rid of the border radius because we didn't don't really have that going on anywhere else on the site. So we wanna keep things consistent. All right, so now what if we wanted to add a case study section underneath this? Maybe you've helped out a few clients and you wanna show uh, those stories of people you've helped. So but this could be any kind of content you want. It could be any section. I'm just gonna show you, we'll go to starter templates, blocks. So then again, you're gonna find whatever kind of content fits your, your stuff the best. I'm gonna go to statistics. So, so I'm just gonna choose this one right here um, and click on import block. And I might start by giving this just a really subtle background color so it's d differentiated from the section above it. So click the whole section, go to style, and then let's see what we can do. Let's just do something really nice and light. So it's barely there, but there's definitely a really nice subtle difference between the sections. All right, so we would change the headline. Case study client one, we'd put the, the name of the client there or the company name. And I'm gonna delete the little divider. And I'm also gonna delete the button here, but I wanna add something. So let's say you had a great video where you're kind of going over this case study. So we just take the video widget, drag it right in. So this does go to show you, just because you're using a pre-made block does not mean you can't add or subtract widgets from that block. So again, you would just wanna have that video uploaded to YouTube already, and then just paste in the, the URL right there. And then you would make a little description text over here, you would just type that in. And these progress bars are kind of cool. They visually show, you know, a statistic or, or something like that. So let me show you what I mean. So a lot of people use these to show like, you know, I'm 75% proficient in Photoshop or, you know, that kind of thing. But I might actually change this to something like, you know, revenue increased by 75% or, you know, new followers. Under type, we would just leave that as default. And then for inner text, you know, we would change it from a percentage to just a number. And then you can kind of 
make make it go as far over to the right as you want to with that. And I'll do one more. And I'll just delete this. Let's say you only need three, right click delete. And then we can change the style of these as well. So I'm gonna click right here on the first one, go up to style. And then under color, we can choose any color we want, or I'll just choose the magenta accent color I already saved. And then we'll just apply that across the board. So we'll do a right click copy, right click paste style, and one more time. Cool, so let's take a look at that. Looks nice. And if we wanted to do one more for another client, we would just right click duplicate. And then we'd probably wanna change the background color, maybe to white, and then just change the name, client two. And let's say you don't have a video for this one. You can just right click delete and you can put in an image instead. So let's just go up to widgets and over to image and drag and drop and then choose which image you wanna use. Easy as that. And let's say you wanted to switch the, the columns though to have kind of a more interesting layout. Like maybe for this one, it's the image over here and then statistics over here, but you wanna switch it around for this one. So all you do to switch a column is drag the column over to the place where you want it. And now we have a much more interesting layout, right? We could even, if we wanted, take this title and drag it over here. And then finally, what if we wanted to end this page with just a bunch of testimonials from happy clients? So the way we would do that is we could go over to starter templates and choose the right section block as we've been doing. But if you remember, we actually have a section like this on the homepage for testimonials. So you can absolutely go back to that homepage, just go to edit with Elementor, find the, the section you want, but just go ahead and right click copy this whole section then we'll go back to this page and we'll right click paste. And that way we have a nice consistent look across our pages. From there, you can either use some of the same testimonials as you have on the homepage, or you can change them one by one, just going bit by bit, changing the text, the image, the name. We could even add a new row of these. So let's choose this section where the testimonials are. We'll right click duplicate. And now we have two rows. We could do it again, or let's say we have you know, we only have five, not six. Right click, delete. So it's a very customizable layout. And if we wanted to just darken up this background a bit, we could do that just by clicking on the section. We can obviously change out the image if we want. We could just choose to make it, you know, a black color or any color we want, really. I actually think that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna leave it like that. And I do see we still have one of those divider lines here. I'm gonna right click, delete on that. It's barely visible on the black, but all right. So here we have our new client success page with some of our work showing, going into case studies, going into testimonials. All right, so now let's just make sure it looks good on mobile as well. And we know how to do that. We just go down to responsive mode and section by section. Again, we gotta change the, the sizing here. So let's click on the text and go up to style, typography, and something like that looks pretty good. So let's just go through it. So we've got our gallery. We've got our first case study, second case study, and then all of our testimonials. Looks pretty good. I don't think there's too many changes to be made here. I do actually want to show you something though, just in case you ever need it. So there are going to be instances sometimes on mobile when if something's not super important, like maybe you have it on desktop because it looks good and it's just a way you're adding something to kind of fill the space but you don't want people to have to endlessly scroll on mobile. Let's say this gallery was not super important and you didn't want to have, you didn't want this getting in the way of people looking at your case studies. Very easy to hide it on mobile. All we need to do is choose the section or any specific element. You could hide this headline if you wanted to. You could hide uh, this headline if you wanted to. Any element, column, or entire section can be hidden on mobile and I'll show you how. In this case, it's gonna be the whole section. We'll choose it, we'll go to advanced, responsive, hide on mobile. Easy as that. Now it's gonna still show here when we're in edit mode, but you'll see when we collapse this, for our preview, it's gone. But it still does show up in our desktop view. If we go up here, it's still right here. All right, cool, so let's go ahead and click on update to save our changes. And then our preview changes, uh, eyeball icon, and now let's click over on contact so we can start editing that one and then edit with Elementor. All right, so we know the drill by now. We just got, if you wanna change the headline, you would do that by clicking on it over here and then changing out the background image. We'll go up top, 
to choose the section and then over to style, choose image, and let's choose this one right here and then insert media. And then of course you wanna shorten it up like the rest. So we'll go to advanced and change padding to 150 and 150. Okay, so now we have all our actual contact form. We have a headline, we have the contact information over here, followed by some social media icons. You change the headline the way we always change headlines. Same with this one over here. And then for each of these, you would just click on them. It's got a title and a description, so you would obviously input your own address here. Um, I do recommend getting rid of email. I think that people will already be able to email you with this form, and I find that listing your email address publicly is actually gonna to lead to you getting a lot of spam. So I'm gonna delete that. And then call us, you'd put in your own phone number, of course. And then for the social icons, let's talk about those for a second. So kind of a cool feature, they're a widget. So if you went up here and you typed in social icons, like you could put social icons anywhere. I don't recommend putting them everywhere. I think on the contact page or in your footer is probably the best place for them. But if you click on this widget, you can basically choose which social media platforms you wanna show. Like obviously Google Plus is no longer a thing. So if you wanna change that, you just go to Icon Library and let's type in YouTube. Maybe you have a YouTube channel and then insert. And you're not limited to three, of course. You can add another one. You can change the shape of it. Right now it's set to circle. You could do squares or you could do rounded squares. You know, whatever fits your style the best. And from there, you just go one by one on each of them. You set the link. You just type in the website address for your actual Facebook profile or your Twitter profile or your YouTube channel. Then once you've done that, you can go up to style and you can change the color if you want. So there's a few options here. Basically, you can either choose the colors that the, each of them are to go with your own branding, which I tend to recommend, or you can go with official color meaning they'll be the officially designated color for that social media platform. I hardly ever recommend this because you're drawing a lot of attention here to get people to leave your website to go to your social media when honestly it should always be the other way around, right? We wanna attract people with our social to get them back to our website. So I like to be a little more subtle with my social media button. So let's go ahead and do custom. And I actually think this gray color is fine, but you could change it to anything. And then see how we have a hover color when you, when you mouse over it, you can change that down here. But I'll leave it as is, I think it's fine for now. So now we need to concentrate on this form. So I'm gonna show you how to customize the form to make it have any form fields you need, as well as the really important part, which is that obviously when someone fills this out, it needs to send to your email. It doesn't know to do that automatically, so we have to configure that. It's, it's pretty easy, but we do that in a slightly different way than what we how we've been doing everything else. So first of all, let's click on update. Let's save all of our changes. And it's slightly clunky, but the place where we configure the form itself and then what the button looks like are in kind of two different places, unfortunately. So since we're already in this area, let's just go ahead and uh, customize the button we're going to go up to these three but these three lines up here site settings and then buttons so here's where we'll choose the same button color we already had we probably could have done this in the very beginning but we didn't know what button color we were going with then so uh, let's just go over to background color and I'm going to choose on the this globe icon here that shows us all of our global colors we've saved so I'll choose that and then on update so now this button color matches what we've already got. So now we need to X out of here. Okay, so let's click on these three dots again and then exit to dashboard. We actually have to handle this inside of the WordPress dashboard, not Elementor. So let's click on the WordPress logo and we'll go down to WP Forms. And when we imported this site from Starter Templates, it already created a contact form for us. We just need to edit it now. So let's click on Edit. So here's the form we're working with. Um, this is not representative of the style of what it's going to look like. It's just showing us what the form fields are, what the button says, that good stuff. So if you needed to change any of these things, so for instance, if you wanted this to say, you know, first name instead of your name, so you'd think you'd be changing under label. Unfortunately, it's a little more confusing than that. You have to go down to advanced options and we're actually gonna go under where the placeholder is. So this is the placeholder text. So I'm just gonna type in first name, let's say you wanted to go with that. And what if you wanted to actually add 
a different element in here. You want to add a, a new field. You have more questions you want to ask. These are all single line text. And then this is a paragraph text, giving them more space. So you would basically, if you wanted one more of these, you would just drag in a single line text and then you'd edit it like this. If you wanted it to match this, you would actually get rid of the label and then you'd go down to advanced options and it would be, you know, something like that. But we're actually going to get rid of that. We're gonna hit the trash can icon and we're gonna say okay. And then if you wanted something that's like multiple choice, like a drop down kind of thing. Yeah, let's do a drop down. I'll just bring this right in here. And again, imagine if you wanted to ask people, you know, what's your budget? You would just click here to edit it and the label would say, what's your budget? And then you know, would have your options here. You know, budget A through C, and then they can click here and basically it would drop down and they would be able to choose. And you can make any of these elements required. So if you if they have to fill it out in order for the form to send, you can click that right there. But we're actually going to just get rid of this too. Just wanted to show you what all your options are. Generally speaking, this is enough information, especially if you want to have a lot of people fill out your form. Remember, the more you ask, the fewer people are actually going to ever do it. So keep that in mind. Now, the most important part, we need to make this actually send to your email. So the way we do that is we go over to settings and then notifications. So you wanna make sure those are on and then you need to specify your email address here. That is where when someone fills out the form, this is the email address that form is gonna to send to. Then email subject, um, I like to put in something like, you know, new website inquiry from name so basically think about it like this they filled out their name that's field zero they filled out their email which was field one so these are short codes and as long as you didn't mess with any of that too much you can leave these as is so if they typed in you know their name is barbara barbara will show up here now this one's a little confusing but it's actually supposed to be your email address as well And then reply to, meaning when they send that form through, whatever email address they put in, whenever you reply to it, it's going to go right back to their email address. And then all fields will keep that as, as is. And we're just going to click on save and then X out. Cool. Now let's just go back to pages and then to contact, edit with Elementor to, lead, to pick up where we left off. So by now, this form is properly configured to actually take in their information and send to you. So let's go ahead and take a look on mobile by going down to responsive mode. And of course we need to change the sizing of that headline, go up to style, typography, and let's just eyeball it. That looks pretty good. Um, this is kind of funky. It doesn't need to be on two lines, I don't think. So let's click that and then style, typography. So let's make it just big enough to fit on one line. And I think it's looking good. It's uh, these fields feel big enough for people to actually put their thumb in and then send message. And then we got our, our contact info. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. All right, so let's click on update. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got so far. So let's go back to our desktop view right up here. So we've got all of these pages. We've actually changed the name of projects. We will change that later in the heading as well. So what don't we have up here? We don't have a blog, right? And maybe you need a blog, maybe you don't. I, I usually recommend having one for SEO value. If I think it's really important, but if you don't need a blog, go down in the description and you can go to the next chapter where we talk about the header and footer. But if you do need a blog, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in just a few extra steps. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna pull this out, click on this uh, hamburger menu, and then go back to the dashboard. So we do need to go back to WordPress to make this work. And then the, I'm gonna hit the WordPress icon again. So the first thing we need to make this work is we need an additional plugin because believe it or not, the free version of Elementor and with starter templates, they don't really include a great functionality for having a blog page that lists all of your recent blog posts. So let's go down to plugins, add new, and I'm gonna search for, it's called, it's called premium add-ons for Elementor and it's this one right here. So we're just gonna click on install now and activate. So before we can actually design what this page is gonna look like, we need to have a few blog posts ready, or at least dummy posts, so we can see what we're doing. Because if we don't have enough, 
we're not going to really get a sense of what it all looks like on the page. So let's go over to posts and then all. And by the way, if you're, if you're unfamiliar with, with this and you want to add blog posts, you generally would go to add new under posts and then you would just create the blog post in that text editor. So let's go ahead and look at the one that it always comes with. Whenever you do a new WordPress install, it comes with this hello world uh, dummy post. So let's just click on that. I'll click on edit. So the way it works is you put your title here and then you just start typing here in this text editor. You can put images in, all that good stuff. But then what we really need here just for our purposes of kind of making a design that looks good, we need to set a featured image. So Think about whenever you go to a blog, there's always like the big image on top, almost always anyway. So I'm gonna click on set featured image, and then you would just you know drag an image over or choose one you've already got. So let's choose this one and then set featured image. And then I'm gonna click on update. Now let's go click on the WordPress icon again. Okay, so now we're back in all our posts. Here's what we need to do. We need to make three of these for our design purposes. So we're gonna go to PA duplicate and one more time. So I'm just gonna to go to each one of these real quick. I'm gonna click on the first duplicate. I'll change the title, Hello World Part Two, and I'll change the featured image, and then publish. And then I'm gonna go back out, and I'm gonna do the same thing with our remaining uh, dummy blog post. Okay, so we have three dummy blog posts to work with. So from here, all we need to do is go to pages. And the easiest thing to do is just to copy, make a duplicate of a page we already made, and then just add the new content onto that. So let's go with a nice easy one. Let's just do our about page and we'll do PA duplicate. And then this is the one we just made. So let's go to quick edit and we'll change this to blog. Under status, we'll move it to published instead of draft and then update. Okay, so now we can just click on edit with Elementor and get going. All right, so first things first, let's get rid of all the content that's already here. I will click on the X and once more, I'll change this to, it could either say blog or it could say something more like that. And you know how to change the background image, but I think I'll just keep it like this. You just click on the section, go up to style and then change it over here. But I think this is fine. So. Now what we need to do is add in those, that grid of all of our recent blog posts right here. So, so that people can find one they like, they click on it, and then they can read the entire article. So let's go up to our widgets and I'm gonna type in blog. Okay, so premium blog is the one we need. And it says PA because this is, uh, this is that plugin we just installed, gives us uh, access to, to this widget. So we're just gonna take it and we're gonna drag it right over there. All right. so. Here's what's happening now. We've got all three of our dummy posts showing here in a grid. And then when you click through it, you get to the page itself. So obviously we have a bit of work to do to make this look good. The first thing I wanna do is give a bit of breathing room here. Cause again, it feels chaotic, right? So I'm gonna choose the entire section, then go up to advanced. And I'm gonna give this, um, let's see what 80 looks like on top. Actually, sorry, we need to unlink the values. And then 80 on top, 80 on bottom. Already it feels nicer, but we're also gonna give it a bit of space between these. And I'm actually gonna turn this animation off because I find it pretty annoying, at least to work with it. So we have to click on the widget itself and then down on featured image. And then a hover effect, I'm just gonna disable it for now. You can feel free to keep it if you want and play around with all these different animations that happen when you mouse over it, but I'm gonna put it on none just so we don't have to deal with that every time we're mousing around. All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like so far. So we have the featured image, we have the title, we have all this, what we call metadata. It has the author's name, the date it was published, the category. So when you write a new blog post, you can basically make up a category for it so that people can find what they're looking for more easily, as well as comments. So if you have comments enabled, which they usually are by default, then it'll say how many comments there are. And then finally, we have a bit of, you know, this would basically be the first couple lines of the, of the article itself. So let's talk about styling this now. Let's go up to general under content. You've got some choices. There's different what they call skins. So this is classic. You have modern, which is slightly different. You have cards. You have on the side. 
and you have banner, which is a little trickier. I generally recommend staying away from this one because it is a little hard to read the text and there's a lot of kind of nuance to that that you have to deal with. So I'm gonna go back to classic. I think it looks the best in most cases. You can choose the number of columns here. I tend to like three the best. I think it looks the cleanest. And then you have all kinds of options under here, under featured image. You can, again, you can choose the, the hover effect. You can choose to, to not show the featured image. If you just want a really kind of clean look, you could do a shape divider. I've actually never played around with this. What's this gonna look like? Okay, so you've got like, I've done this in other sections. I've never done it in a blog post before. All right. It's interesting, but I think I'm just gonna get rid of it and do none. And then you've got display options. And this is a really important one because I do think that these are too close together. So I would like to play around with, let's see what 20 looks like, 20 and 20. I do like that better. It, just, it gives it more breathing room between them. I think it looks a lot cleaner that way. And then post options. Here's where we can choose to get rid of some of this stuff because I don't think it's that important necessarily to have the author's name or the, I especially don't like to include the date because if it's a two-year-old post, people are a lot less likely to want to read it if they know it's old. So I like to kind of hide all this stuff, but it's up to you what you want to show. I do like to keep categories showing as long as you're using categories. If you're not, then go ahead and hide it. Now let's go up to style where we can talk about, you know, the style of the headline and all the text and stuff. So let's go to title first and then let's change the color from the pink. We don't really want that. So I'm going to just choose simple black and then typography. I'm gonna bump up the size a bit. Not that much. I think that's good, but then the weight, I want it to be normal. I don't want it to be bold. Yeah, I think that's much better. And then we can go to content box and here's where we can change the background color of these boxes. So under background color, you could kind of choose anything you want. I don't recommend doing anything bold like this. What I actually like is I like it to be white and then you can go down to box and then box shadow and do something like that, which I think looks kind of cool. And if you want to make it a little less obvious, you just choose the color and you drag this down make it a little more subtle, just like that. But again, keep in mind, you can, you're can you using your own fonts, your own colors, your own styles. You can even make these rounded. Let me go ahead and choose the this whole widget again and go down to box and then border radius. You can play around with that here. So you can get any kind of look you're after. So let's just open this back up and do a reality check on responsive mode. And eh, this is actually isn't that bad, but I think I'm gonna make it slightly smaller anyway. Let's go up to style, typography. I think that looks a little better. All right, so then we've got the first, second, and third blog post all ready to go. Looks pretty good to me. So we'll just open this back up and click on update. Okay, we're almost finished. There's just one more step we need to take and that's customizing your header and footer. So just click right here and that'll take you to the next video where we'll quickly and officially finalize your brand new website with a beautiful, fully functional header and footer. So just click right here and we'll wrap this sucker up.